Welcome back to Inside South Florida. Prepare to have your mind blown. Here is Dr. Lloyd Zucker, a neurosurgeon with Delray Medical Center, to tell you about Synaptive technology. Dr. Zucker, good to have you back on the show. How you doing? Good to see you again. All right. Uh, you walked in here beaming. Like a, like a kid at Christmas, as you said. Am I still me. You're still so happy to see a guy that's been in the medical profession for a decent amount of years. You know, you're what, like 30 years old, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but you're so excited about this new technology. Uh, tell us all about it. We have a combination of technologies that we can now use to look at the brain in a way we've never looked at it before. Okay, so so specifically how we're gonna sh we're gonna look at it sure. in a minute, but um, to, you know give us a little bit more in terms of a, a patient comes in and now you're able to do what that you could not previously do. Well, the scary thing is that if you look at the brain and you look at something that's within the brain, before this, the best way that we could get to it would be the shortest way, which makes sense. But what nobody really understood is that all the fibers that exist within the brain, we can't see them. When we go below the surface of the brain, we have no idea really what's there. This technology allows us to look at those fiber bundles. By looking at them, we can plan a path to get to what the abnormality is. May not always be the shortest path, but now we're choosing a path that creates the least damage on the way there. As I'm, I'm listening to you explain it, I'm trying to think of a metaphor or comparison. I'm thinking about a pilot. It almost seems like a pilot, you know, who's almost sort of flying blind in a rainstorm and, you know, really bad weather now might have a better compass, might, you know, be able to see the skies a little better. You're, well, you're talking about navigation. Right. And, and navigation is, is a part of this. In the past, we would choose a target, we would choose an entry point, and we would navigate to that point. Now we choose the target and the entry point, but we're actually navigating our way through, if I was to fly through Fort Lauderdale, now I can fly through the buildings because I know where the buildings are. Great, and this is this synaptive technology is only a couple years old. Basically, a few years, two years old in yeah. development, and then um, with us now for about six months. All right, so like you said, you brought some images. Let's see them and uh, talk us through it. This looks really interesting. The basics that you start with, it's different for every patient. So it's not that I'm trying to get your brain to fit into the program. I take your images. Once I take your images, the computer basically number crunches. And if you look, those in all their glory are the fibers within the brain. Now, what I'm trying to do is figure out the best path to something within the brain. And if you watch, we can basically thin them down, rotate them, turn them around. What you have to realize is the tough part about this, these are all wonderful colors, but over here is speech. Over here is moving your right hand. Over here is vision. Um, over here is some part of intellectual thought. And in the past, we had no way to avoid those areas because we couldn't see those areas. Now we can see those areas, and by doing that, hopefully create better outcomes because we know where we're going. I mean, not to overuse sort of a cliche expression, but it sounds like it's a game changer. Uh, it's not a cliche here. Right. It is an absolute game changer. It, if you look at neurosurgery over the past decades, if not 100, 150 years, we've had microscopes and other things, but there has not been a single development that has changed the face of how we do neurosurgery. And if you look, there's not been a single development that has changed outcomes. This is totally revamped how we look at the brain. And so now everything that we look at, a brain tumor, a hemorrhage, um, structural disease, autism, Alzheimer's, everything can be looked at in a different way because we never had this power before. So, so armed with this, you look at this, and how does it help you know, how does it help the surgery? How does it help the patient? How does it reduce the risk of complications? What practically, how, how can it help? The more information you have, uh, the better off you are. So I can plan what I'm doing now, looking at those fiber bundles that we talked about to try and avoid what I consider a critical area. If I avoid a critical area, I don't create a deficit by what I'm doing. The worst thing is to consider that you might be causing damage getting to a problem. 
in the past, we did the best we could with the information that we had. Now to be able to get to the problem and try to avoid creating the deficits on the way there in whatever it is, speech, strength, sensation. Right, because thinking as a, as a patient, you know, you, you go in for whatever you go in for and boy, it's frustrating that a potential complication might be something that worked fine ahead of time might, might be impaired, right? Without a question. Right. I mean, in every, in the old informed consent, I have to sit there and tell you all the bad things that could happen. And I still tell you the same things, but the confidence level I have in being able to get to what I need to get to and not create harm mm -hmm. is obviously much better now. So, so who might um, qualify to have this work done? Any patient that comes to see you is uh, you know, potentially someone that you know, might be subject to this? Well, right now, the possibilities are, are endless. Um, you have approximately 200 neurosurgeons that have seen this. So you're in a situation where I don't think we really know everything that we can do with this. We've worked on hemorrhages, we've worked on tumors, but we get to turn this view on anything and everything that we've looked at before and look at it in a different way. I personally, I'm using this to look at concussions. Nobody's ever seen it that way. Now, what will come out of that, we don't know. But to have a new tool, uh, now you can see why I'm I know, you're, you're beaming. <laughs> yeah, I can see it because as a guy that, you know, you've been doing this your whole life and, and there are for frustrations 30, for 30, for 30, 30 years, old, yeah. obviously. You Doogie Howser, sure. <laughs> uh, but, you know, right, So because you probably sometimes get frustrated. Oh, man, if only I could have seen that or whatever. Now you can. And, and, this, and this is really only the beginning, right? Technologically, there are some other really cool things coming. This is the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, having a chance to work with the company that developed this, there are other imaging things that they are working on, there are optical things that they are working on that take our present use of a microscope and elevate it to a level that I've never seen before. So to me, uh, this, is, this is ground level. This is like I was a resident in neurosurgery again and learning from my professors. This is doing it all over again, but with, with glee. So, uh, Dr. Zucker, if people have questions, which I'm sure they will, and they want to see you, and they want to ask, uh, ask you more about this, how do they find you? Well, uh, Chief of Neurosurgery at Delray Medical Center, um, and if, a, a kudo to them because this technology wouldn't be down here if it wasn't for a supportive CEO and a supportive hospital, um, I wouldn't be sitting with you today. Right. Um, my office is in Boca. Uh, they can certainly look me up or call me at my office, and we can sit and go over whether or not there's something positive I can do for them. It's always good to see you, uh, and it's good to see how excited you are about it. Always this. good to be here. All right, you got it. Good to see you again. You got it.